When Cameron was 16 years old, he had a seizure in the middle of the night. This was his first seizure. He never had any seizures before that night. He had an MRI at that time and everything came out normal. Um, they told us at that time that he could potentially have a free seizure, that people can have one seizure in their lifetime and never have another one. Um, and so that's what we were thinking would happen. Unfortunately, nine months later, he had another seizure. Because of the second seizure, we took him to the neurologist who said now he was deemed as having epilepsy. And they recommended starting him on medicines, which he did start on Keppra at that time. He had a third seizure somewhere in there, but the fourth one was sort of what woke us up a little because he had had a stomach virus and it, you know, he wasn't feeling well. And he also shared with us that he hadn't been taking his medicine like it had been prescribed for him. Um, and so from that point on, before his fifth and final seizure, he took his medicine religiously. Cameron's seizures were always at night. Um, and when he passed away, um, the coroner let us know that he died of something called sudden unexpected death in epilepsy, a term that we had never heard before. Nobody told us about it. Um, we had no idea what that was and come to find out. It's not just a description of how he died, but it is a, something that happens to a small group of people with epilepsy. One of the things that is most feared among people with epilepsy, their families and their providers, is that they may actually die suddenly, unexpectedly, without warning and without explanation. While we don't really know all of the risk factors underlying SUDEP and we don't fully understand how and why SUDEP might happen for a given individual, we do know that there are some things that can help to mitigate the risk. We know that Uncontrolled seizures at refractory epilepsy place people at higher risk. And so it is really incumbent on all of us to do everything that we can with medication, with lifestyle choices, with a number of different tools that we may have to try to limit each individual's seizures for those who have epilepsy. In doing that, we will be one step closer to helping each individual lower the risk of SUDEP. We still, however, need to understand what causes it. When we went to the doctor, we weren't given a lot of information. We weren't really told about things to avoid or really any information other than take your medicine and you now have epilepsy. There's certainly no requirement about counseling about SUDEP that has been mandated in any way. We've come to realize from hearing from many families in particular who have unfortunately lost their relatives to SUDEP that they wish they would have heard about it from us. I think that physicians who are in the field of epilepsy Neurologists, epileptologists have a responsibility to share as much information as possible with their patients, especially newly diagnosed. Obviously, there's a balance between scaring people and, um, you know, helping them to adjust uh, to their new diagnosis. However, it has to be noted that epilepsy can be very serious and, in some very rare cases, fatal. We owe it as physicians to our patients and their families to provide information. Is this done practically and when is it done? There isn't a standard. My hope is that, that we will have a standard at some time to be able to mandate that this education is given. I feel as though those people in the epilepsy community have an obligation to educate themselves, to advocate for themselves and be assertive uh, with their physicians. I also feel like um, as a community, we need to bring epilepsy out of the shadows. It is the most common disease that we know the least about. And for some reason, people don't talk about it enough. We hear about all kinds of other diseases, but epilepsy sort of under the rug or in the shadows. And I think we all have an obligation to speak up about it. We all potentially have platforms and ways that we can share our voice and bring more attention to epilepsy. And most importantly, we need to focus on research. We need to end epilepsy. We need to end pseudo. Um, and research is what is going to get us there. Cure has made an impact in helping to understand pseudo and to work towards a day without pseudo through three very important areas awareness, research, and advocacy. 
people need to get involved and know what's happening in the research world and to contribute as much as possible because that is what is going to end epilepsy. Please join me tonight when we unite to cure epilepsy.